Welcome back to the Olympic Zone. I promised two Olympians, and it's super convenient because they can carpool together because they're married. <laughs> 2008 Olympic gold medalist Gabe Gardner in volleyball and his lovely wife, Lauren McFall Gardner, who has a bronze medal in synchronized swimming, one of my favorite sports and arguably harder than volleyball, perhaps, <laughs> from the Athens Olympics. Gabe agrees. So, I mean, like, flashback to where you guys were, you know, all those years ago. Did you get up this morning and watch a little of the opening ceremony, and, and what did it bring back for you? Yeah, I, I did, and I actually found a clip of, of from my opening ceremonies because I just remember, you know, we were there a week before, but it didn't feel like I was really at the Olympics until opening ceremonies. And I think even now, it's probably one of the most profound memories of my entire life because it's just so, uh, you know, it's palpable, it's visceral, and you're like so aware of representing your country and you're high-fiving all these other countries and it really feels like the whole world stops. And it's a sort of peaceful, joyful moment with all these other athletes, and there's really nothing else like it. And it's interesting, even though there was no one in the stands, which I found so weird to watch, you still had that feeling with the athletes when they started coming in. Yeah, the the opening ceremonies, like Lauren was saying, is, is still like the moment that you've arrived. Yeah. And it's a culmination of a lot of years and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears from all these athletes that's like, okay, until the opening ceremonies, it doesn't feel real to you that you're actually at the Olympics. So credit to all the athletes, especially um, all over the world, not just American athletes that have worked this hard to get there. You've worked as a, an Olympic liaison with the athletes over the years. Um, what are you hearing this week from them? I think it's just an Olympics unlike any other, you know, it, obviously without all the fans, it's going to be challenging, but we've seen that work in the NBA and, and, and a lot of the other professional sports. So at the end of the day, um, they're focused on doing the best they can and representing their country. And I think everybody's going to do that. Yeah. You know, and the bottom line is they're going to have to hype each other. And, you know, on a team like you had, they're good at that. Yeah. Yeah. And even recently at the uh, qualifier for the Olympics, uh, for artistic swimming, that was a big part of it. The other countries were cheering each other on. There's almost more camaraderie because mm -hmm. you don't have an audience to, to support that. So it's sort of interesting and beautiful. And like Gabe said, the athletes ha always have challenges coming to an Olympics, of course. This has been incredibly unique. So I think I feel even more invested in this. Just really excited to see how everyone manages this. You guys have four kids. Do they care that their parents are Olympians? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit embarrassed at times, yeah, yeah. like any parent and kid relationship. But I just want to I want to say one more thing. It's just about when you're an athlete. Do like, me a favor. Hold up the medal okay. as you say it is. We want to be yeah, able to I, I will say that every athlete that's there right now is thinking about people that are behind the scenes that have supported them. So all the coaches that touch their lives, family members, whether extended or not. You do think about that when you're at the Olympics, whether they're there or not. So that's that's yeah. something that- and those, and those medals represent sacrifices of your parents as well and yeah. of your families and your communities. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Nice to they're gonna know how cool you are someday. <laughs> I believe it. All right. Tell them and tell them. I will. <laughs>